Named after GMW Turner, it's one of the most prominent arts awards in the world that also comes with a prize tag of more than $30,000. Following last year's controversy over its video art-focused choices, this year's shortlist seems to be more politically concerned. The artists in this 35th edition of the awards delve into topics including feminism, civil rights and the war in Syria. The winner, chosen by a four-person jury, will be announced at a ceremony on December the 3rd. Yes, that's right, this year's Turner Prize shortlist is bold and highly political. To shed some light on why it is the case and what to expect from the prize this year, art historian Farin Gibson joins us now. Hi Farin, great to have you on show today. Why do you think yep. this year's Turner Prize shortlist is so political compared to the very highly criticized one last year? Yeah, I think that um, everything is highly political right now when you think about it. Uh, the state of so many things that's going on across the world, I think it would have been remiss in a way for the Turner Prize not to engage with that on some level. And I think that all of us in our respective sectors are engaging with these issues. So it really makes sense to me. I mean, I think Lawrence Abu Hamdan's work, the sound artist's work, is particularly very, very political. It's about the atrocities taking place in Syria at the moment. Can you talk us through his work, please? Yeah, he's a really interesting sound artist. Um, he really bridges that gap between the artistic and the political. Uh, his work, Ear Witness, is based on interviews he did with uh, former detainees in a Syrian uh, prison who were kept in the dark and then were tortured by means of hearing sounds um, that they that they thought were happening. So things that sounded like a gunshot, for example. Um, and so. Um, he, he took his experience of interviewing these works and he, he carried their stories forward through his work where he has, for example, a popcorn machine that sounds like guns going off. And I know that he's uh, collaborated with um, Amnesty, Amnesty International and in his work, and it's really uh, powerful and moving work. It really makes you introspective to, to see it. Mm -hmm. And that is a very interesting shortlist in the sense that we go to Northern Ireland and then Helen Kamek is also another artist that is on the list. And uh, her work is about uh, the role of women during the conflict in Northern Ireland. Why do you think she made it onto the list? She's incredibly interesting um, and, and she, there was a lot of buzz around her during Freeze. Um, she's also looking at North American civil rights issues. She's examining her own heritage as um, having a Jamaican and a British parent. And these are things that people can really relate to, as well as, um, thankfully, there's been kind of an increased platform for women's stories and women artists in the art sector right now, which is very much needed. Um, so I, I think that um, it, She's, she's kind of part of this movement we see bubbling up and very much deserves to be there. And yeah, the jury praised her timely and urgent quality because of this, I believe. And there is another artist, Tai Shani. Uh, she, her work is also quite uh, feminist, I believe. But what do you think about that? I mean, what do you think about her work? Yeah, it's very surreal. It's very uh, performance oriented. And I think that uh, what it does is it, it forces the viewer to be engaged. It forces you to, through the, the things, everything that's going on, um, you're constantly needing to actively watch, actively listen, which I think is something that we could all stand to do a lot more. <laughs> if you think about social media, there's a lot of shouting and not necessarily a lot of listening. Uh, so I, I think that's a really exciting thing to see play out in an artistic space. Yeah, for sure. And the judges in the press said that, let me read this from my notes, there is joy in the political and their work, the contenders' work, seeks to foreground voices that have perhaps been marginalised. Do you think Turner will manage to give voice to the marginalised voices? This year. Yeah, I think they've done a good job this year in terms of um, diversity. You know, there's there's different ethnic groups re represented. It's half women, half men. Um, and I think that also individually, they're each telling a different story, you know, stories of immigration, stories of um, politics and war. And it's very, it feels very intersectional this year. Uh, so I think that it's an exciting list. And I think it's a, a great move forward because it hasn't been um, as diverse in the past. So that's a, it's a positive sign, definitely. So do you find the shortlist successful this year? Yeah, I think it's really interesting. And it's, um, it's some artists that have had buzz and maybe um, some that we're still getting to know. So it's, it's a good list. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Turner Prize has certainly lost some popularity, but how much power do you think it still has? I think everything is going to have ebbs and flows, and I think that it would be difficult for the prize to nail it every single year. Um, but it's it's a, an extremely prestigious award by a prestigious institution. Uh, the Tate hosts it um, every other year, and uh, it's um, it's going to be down to the artist to utilize that platform as best they can. But when you think about Lubaina Hamid and Howard Hodgkin, Damien Hurst, who've won it in the past, uh, it's definitely an honor to count yourself amongst even the nominee, even the, the shortlisted people. I mean, for sure. I definitely agree with that. And quick last question. Who do you think is going to get home the prize this year? Abu Hamdan's work is really, really emotive and um, touching. So I find that really interesting. But I'm also really rooting for Helen Kemick. Um, I just personally connect with her work. And I'm always a sucker for, you know, lifting up women's voices. So I don't know. It's going to be hard to call. Mm -hmm. Let's wait and see on December the 3rd. Thank you so much, Farron Gibson, for joining us on Showcase today and talking us through the shortlist. Thank you.